welcome. Now today is another project day, of course. It's gonna be. <laughs> and this has to be the most, uh, the biggest project I've done today. The biggest series I've done today. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I'm actually really enjoying it. If you've just dropped in and you're wondering what all this is about and what the Sid Box is all about, then do check the link in this description, in this um, letter I here. And I have put a playlist of this project here and also information about the Sid Box in the description below, including the Sid Box group on Facebook. So go ahead, mash those buttons. <laughs> anyway. So I will continue with the project. Last time I did the equalization circuit on this um, audio board for the Sid Boombox. Today what I'm gonna do is do the headphone amplifier, build the headphone amplifier here using a TDA or a TADA <laughs> to wait double two a chip here. I have the components ready here. I'm gonna build it on the breadboard first just to test it out because it's the first time I've built it. Before continuing, I wish to say many thanks to those of you who support me. Passionate content creation is tough and your support means more than you know. Please consider supporting me by hitting that like button. Also do subscribe if you haven't done so, not forgetting that bell icon or you won't be notified. Also don't forget that I'm on Patreon if you wish to support me there. And also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud and Flickr. Don't forget to check out PCBWay if you're looking for custom PCBWay circuit building. I checked out their PCBs and found them to be of excellent quality, and I'm indeed considering them for a future project sometime. And judging by just how surprisingly fast the goodie box with their PCBs got to me, I know they have a fast service. Now to those of you who wish to know, this is the schematic of the amplifier I'm about to build. The audio amplifier using the TADA or TDA 282 chip, and yeah, this is basically it. I'm going to use this as, an, as a headphone amplifier. So, let's get started. Okay, so I'm gonna start building on the breadboard now. First thing is to put the TDA, or the TADA, to wait to do M in there. And let's start. Now first, let's start with the inputs, which is a bit confusing in this chip because you expect inputs to be on the left side and output on the right side. But they're the wrong way around. And yes, I've blown up a freaking Tara chip before because of this. So yeah, let's start with the inputs. So pin seven and six are inputs. So let's use our friend here, left and right. So it's five, six, and seven. So 100 microfarad ground from pin five. Find 200 microfarads, that's one. That's another. Okay, so I need a 4 ohm, 4.7 ohm. I don't have them, but I have 10 ohms. That's the minimum I have. So I can parallel to 10 ohms together to make 5 ohms, which is close enough. So I will do that. Okay, that's done. I'm gonna double check everything before I turn it on. I need to connect the speakers too. Let's not forget that. <laughs> Okay, to test this, I'm going to use those really bad speakers which I got from the boombox originally. <laughs> That's where they came out of. Um, yeah, the crappy, I mean, like, two, two watt speakers, but... <laughs> the freak's going on! Extremely distorted, this thing. Yeah, it sounds like someone's <laughs> it sounds like someone's turned the phone on, and put it in the washing machine, and it's just going. Okay, so what I want to try now, since I just kind of get this working, is um, this I got from the data sheet. This um, that I wait to the, the circuit diagram. Now Wayne used the same uh, chip on the same circuit, in fact, in the Sid box, but he, he's gone through all this process and amended it and stuff. So. Rather than me messing around here, I'm gonna save some time and just build his Sidbox circuit diagram. The one which he did on the Sidbox, the amended and everything. So yeah, I'll, I'll build that and try that. So I built this following, instead of the following the, the datasheet diagram, I followed Wayne's 
um, circuit from the SID box because he's, as I said, he used the same chip. And here's the circuit diagram which he's drawn up. Now, what I had to do in addition to that is change a few things around as well. Like I'm choosing to put um, higher capacity, higher value capacitors on the outputs, and also a few things here and there. So I need to amend this circuit diagram here. So for future reference, when I want to build some another uh, TDA circuit, I don't get confused. So yeah, let's start doing that. Right, so I've revised this circuit and from Wayne's um, circuit and the datasheet one, I've come up with a third circuit with my own, you know, I customize it myself. I put variable resistors here to adjust the um, uh, actual input. I put 470 microfarad capacitors there instead of 100 and, you know, just a few bits here and there. So, yeah, a few changes there. That's the final one which I'm going to use and I'm going to build which all seems to work well on the breadboard here. Now what I'm going to have to need for this... The freak what I'm going to have to need... What I'm going to need for this is um, a 5 volt regulator, a 7805 on the actual board itself because this is not going to work above 9 volts. You know, it starts distorting and stuff. So I'm going to put a 7805 on there. It's not going to draw too much current, but I do have a heat sink there which will be more than enough. Okay, so let's begin the build on of this on this part here. Just enough room for it to Yeah, just enough room for it actually. So yeah, let's get started. Okay, so first what I'm gonna do is the um, the power circuit, which is the 7805. One thing I'm noticing when building this, is this uh, TDA circuit, is that it's just a freaking capacitor fest. <laughs> it's just, just that's all it is. That's all I keep putting on. It's got more capacitors. It's like so many capacitors around, and now it looks like it's having a freaking tribal ritual going on here <laughs> around this TDA circuit. the last two components left and it's these two pots here which I need to put on they're just gonna be the adjustment of the the volume the well the inner the gain really I should say you know what I'm curious how much this weighs because it feels nice and weighty and I kind of like that when I build something <laughs> 161 grams Okay, last touches. I've um, soldered the head wires in the headphone socket. I'm just gonna solder them here. I think this is yeah, just the right length. So let's... Before I do anything, I wanna test these um, potentiometers here. 
see if you know they're <laughs> very in resistance because uh, to be honest I've, I did heat them quite a bit because the stupid track wasn't working so I'm gonna check those before turning it on it's 10k fantastic you can take it down to zero ohms let's check the other one pin six it was pin seven four yeah it's fine fantastic okay moment of tooth cr moment of tooth <laughs> <laughs> moment of my teeth moment of truth and um, crunch time now and <laughs> crunch time I'm gonna freaking test this and I'm nervous I'm really hoping this works now noise wise I cannot hear anything oh. darn it scared the freak out of me <laughs> when that works there's no noise whatsoever, I'm really happy with this. Okay, now the truth comes when I put this on. Okay, it's working, but it's pretty quiet. I'm not sure why it's that quiet. Hmm, why is that quiet? Okay, so I just tried testing this uh, earlier on, but the problem is it didn't work right. <clears throat> In the sense that one of the channels, the right channel, uh, on the headphone out through the um, the last circuit, <laughs> the TDS circuit was actually low, uh, and it was doing my head in because I mean, first I checked the t the circuit here. Actually, it turns out that the circuit, the headphone amplifier circuit, works perfectly. The issue was in the EQ, one of the EQ channels, right? The EQ circuit. What happened is, um, I noticed when I carefully listened, is when I was adjusting the treble, one of the channels uh, was increasing, in, the left channel was increasing in treble every time I you know, increased it, the right channel wasn't. So it felt like the right channel was quieter than the left, significantly quieter. So I wonder what the freak that was. I started fault finding and I managed to find a joint which I'd forgotten to actually solder, which was kind of like, it's like a terminal pin with, you know, a wire just like tugged against it. You know, it was, uh, sorry, pressed against it, but it just kept losing its, you know, so it wasn't making a good connection. So I soldered that, everything is perfectly fine now. It all works and that took quite a, f quite a couple of hours of fault finding because you know, you don't know, do you? <laughs> anyway, so everything is working fine now. So I'll go through the board with you now that it's finished. So over here you have the loudspeaker outputs. Over here you have the audio input to the um, EQ circuit, basically the input to the entire board. Uh, here you have the power input to the entire board. Uh, the TADA circuit, the TDA circuit, uses um, five volts. So I had to create a you know 7805 regulator here. Uh, this here, this actual um, input here, is the relay switch, the switch which switches between speakers and headphones. You know this, the audio switches between them. So to switch to the headphones, you have to energize this coil, which is you know this red wire. Put it to uh, plus volts, and it activates the relay which switches the entire circuit to headphones. And here, there's a five volt output for later on. I decided to I planned on this. So one thing I noticed with this is that even though it works perfectly, it's just a little bit quiet. So it needs a bit of an amplifier, initial amplifier stage before it gets to here. You know, it's, I thought it was gonna be strong enough. The power amp is kind of strong but the headphone amplifier is not as much even though I'm surprised because the TDA2822 is pretty you know strong so that wasn't doing as much as I thought especially after the EQ because the EQ is passive so it takes the, the signal down a fair amount I mean these are 100 kilo ohms so that's gonna severely you know take the signal down I was thinking about a solution for the initial amplifier this the stage before here 
and um, you know, I couldn't find much, but I tried the sit box. I need to actually paint this because I want to paint it my special blue again because I just got the new case from Wayne because he, he's updated a few things. Anyway, the actual circuit in here actually has this very same circuit, this TDA circuit. It exists in here. And when I powered this, when I put this into here, the level, the actual um, level was perfect. So what I'm thinking about doing now is creating another TDA circuit. Not on this board, of course, there's no room, <laughs> but externally. So that the input, audio input is going to go into the first TDA circuit, which is then going to go into here through the equalization. And then it'll go to the power amp and or the second TDA. So that'll be perfect. That'll be enough. You know, so anyway, let's test this now. It's all nice and working and so forth. Right. Okay. So I've put this in and it should be on, there should be 15 volts going in here. Let's do some voltage checks first. Okay. 15, yep. 15 volts going in. Um, this should be 5 volts coming out of here. Yep, perfect. So the 5 volts is powering this and also coming out of here for the other TADA, which I'm the other TDA circuit, TADA circuit, which I'm going to build. And also, I put in some stabilization resistors uh, because this didn't have any stabilization resistors on the input, and I think it needs it. Stabilizing resistors, sorry. That was full volume, so this definitely needs an amplifier stage beforehand. It's in the headphones, but I don't think you can hear that. It's so low. And when you let go, it flips back on the speakers. So it's it's a song contained amplifier audio board with switching between the speakers and the headphones. So yeah, I'm happy with this. It's perfect. <laughs> So this audio board is now done and uh, it looks great. I mean, it's like uh, I always, whenever I build a circuit, I always have a certain style. I make it nice and colorful, colorful and I use the components. I mean, it's not always the practical way I go. Uh, I use the components which have a bit of a retroish kind of feel to them uh, and the retroish kind of look to them. I just like it. I've always done this. This is my signature look when I build circuits. Uh, as you can see with the rest of them. You see it's quite complex from the underneath as well. <laughs> but yeah, this is another one to add to a slowly building col collection for this project with the regulator board here and the the switching, uh, the power switching circuitry here, which is, you know, I cannot wait for these to come together. I just need to start making the other parts now and it will be fine. So anyway, that's all for today. Thanks so much for your likes, your shares. Do leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to check out my other videos and do subscribe for more. And don't forget to hit that bell icon. Also, a big thank you goes to my patrons for all your support. For now, I will say adios. Many thanks to all my patrons for supporting my channel, especially to my huge supporters and top tier patrons. Electron Skip UK, Axel Dominator, Robert Minnis, Rich Corwood, Bohan Wayne Mitchell and Chris Seblensky. Do see the video descriptions below to check out my patrons' websites and YouTube channels. Adios!